Welcome to the Closing Beat, everybody. Happy, happy Wednesday already to you. How you doing out there? We are financial advisors here at Jazz Wealth. Hope you're having a great day. Hope you'll check us out at jazzwealth.com. While other advisors are playing checkers, we are playing chess because we even have someone like Haley who focuses on just our younger, newer clients there. So if you have family, friends that you've been trying to get started investing and you're like, man, they're going to think this is pretty boring, Haley knows how to be just patient with them to make sure we cover all the different things that younger people would be focused on when it comes to managing their money. Retirement's a tough one, right? How are they supposed to know what's going on there? We focus on the other parts of their lives while we're growing their dough. Also, our wine and wealth this week, uh, tomorrow, actually. We do that for clients here at Jazz Wealth. We're going to talk about the top planning challenges that we have when you're within 10 years to retirement, and specifically, what do we do about them? How are we going to conquer that? And I'll show examples. We'll go through all of it. It will be great. So that'll be tomorrow at 8 o'clock there. Um, Hope you'll join us for that. If you're one of our clients, of course, you just log right into the portal. You can check it out and see what's going on. And if you are not one of our clients, then uh, what are you waiting for? You know what I mean? Join us there. All right, let's talk about the stock market here today. Um, all right, I'm going to be a little grumpy. Maybe, maybe just a little bit grumpy, but I'll put a smile on my face and you won't know any different anyways. Um, new home sales. New home sales, granted the number's skewed just a little bit, but up 12% month over month, even if it's skewed by half, up 6% month over month. You know, that puts no pressure on the Fed to do anything here in November. You know, the next rate decision they're gonna have, they're not gonna raise rates. That's it. We're gonna get to the next Fed announcement here in just a couple weeks, actually, and they're gonna leave everything just the way it is. In addition to that, the bond market is already doing its job. Interest rates are going higher, right? Their interest rates just keep moving higher on their own without the Fed. So they know this. And their comments have actually, uh, you know, pointed that out, that the bond market's doing our job. We don't have to do anything with rates. We'll leave them higher for longer because we're not at our target. But basically, that's what they're probably, you know, that's what they're going to end up saying once we get down to it there. If you look at the stocks in the old market here today, uh, earnings. Right. That's going to be a big focus today and well, going through the next week and a half, two weeks there. Every single stock, we're going to go over some of them, every stock that beat earnings and raised their guidance, they were up. Every one of them. Every stock that missed earning, or beat earnings and lowered guidance, okay, they were down. Right? So it tells you right away like what the theme is there. People are looking forward. We go, we get it. Okay, everything's growing. Your people are still spending money, all that stuff. What about going forward? That's where all the action was. Um, unfortunately, that doesn't do much for our stock market. This is a really interesting day. Next Tuesday will be another interesting day. Uh, but this is all an earnings-driven type day. Notice, well, let's just do it this way. We'll go over here. Yeah. Notice in the market here today, uh, if we start right about the official market open somewhere in here, weakness all day, consistent weakness right around, and it obviously stopped, right around that very important technical level that we talked about yesterday. People that like to follow that. It's not looking any better. I'll give you that. Those people are not very excited about this, but more weakness throughout the day that saw no attempt at having someone say, I'll buy that. That's enough of a discount. I'll take that. We didn't see it. In other words, if you're Michael Jordan trying to sell your house in Chicago after all those years, you lower the price, you lower the price, you no one, no, nobody. Eventually you lower the price. Somebody's going to buy the house, right? I don't, if they haven't already. Anyways, so what is this uh, attributed to today, right? We've now given back about 10% of our year to date gains that we've had here so far in the S&P. Was it news about the war? Was it bond yields? Inflation? The Fed? Was it Gavin Newsom in China for some reason? Was it the new Speaker of the House that most people haven't ever heard of? Did Biden trip again? Was, was Trump on trial? Yeah. What, what was it? It was nothing, right? It was all earnings driven. Once a quarter, we have to deal with this, where the big names report earnings and they can skew the market just for a day or two. It's uh, here. Let's see. Take a look. It's kind of like this is the S&P here. It's kind of like you have a team, okay, and you're, I don't know, you're playing basketball, whatever it is. You're playing a sport, and these are your teammates, and these are your uh, competitors, right? We have Microsoft putting up eight points today. United Healthcare, ooh, that teammate didn't do so well. V uh, Visa, they had earnings. We'll talk about that. Oh, they didn't put up a lot of points to the index, 
in other words, to the team. Uh, waste management, yeah, comes in fourth place. Waste management gains 5.78%, only adds 0.4 points to the S&P. Okay, well, we've got a star player. We've got Microsoft do, doing all, you like this? You're loving this. Cody's loving this, a team analogy here. So one star player doing all the points. Okay, let's go to the other side, uh, except they're gonna take points. So Alphabet, yo, okay, they're taking nine points. That's a score for the Bears, right? Well, it's two classes of stock for Alphabet. That's unfortunate because they both have weighting in the S&P, but that's, I don't make the rules. Uh, they take away eight points. All right, we got two players, essentially twins, right? Uh, you got Amazon, Hi, he's taking away almost eight points. NVIDIA, good job, taking away six. Apple taking away almost five. Meta, well, that'll change tomorrow, but taking away 3.3. .3. Broadcom taking away one. Thermo Fisher, who, right? Taking away one point. So it's like a team where these guys took away a lot more points than these guys could post up because only Microsoft came to play today. So when you go look at the stock market today, you go, well, the other team's winning. The team that's trying to take points, they're doing it. And unfortunately, a lot of those names have a, uh, they're the star. They have a bigger weighting. They're just better, right? So they get a bigger percentage in the S&P, which is my team analogy there. Uh, it's a little worse for the NASDAQ, by the way. If you look at the NASDAQ, hey, there's Microsoft putting up 40 points today in the NASDAQ. Way to go. K Kraft Heinz, out of nowhere, puts up a half point. Okay, well, uh, American Electric, hey, Diamondback Energy, oh, anybody else want to contribute? No, not today. It was just Microsoft, your star player. On the downside, there's old Alphabet again. The two twins just killing it, drop, ripping 46 points a piece off. Then Amazon 44, Nvidia coming in with 30, Apple at 23, Meta, blah, 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 blah. You get what I'm saying? So you can't have something where all of a sudden there's a big rally. You're staring at the market all day and you go, well, nothing's gonna change unless those guys decide to quit taking points away or some of the lesser known people decide to add some points, but they'd have to have monstrous days, right? You'd have to have Kraft Heinz have a 10% day. That's not gonna happen. So as a day trader, someone who's more second by second in the market, you go, um, even if they gain 10% and American Electric gain 10% and Diamondback gain, what are the odds of that? That's a long shot right there. So you know that the market's not really gonna do anything for you there, okay? It's a way of breaking down everything into one piece. The Dow also very quiet. The Russell, uh, I would say the Russell now down, that's 5%. So year to date, Russell's down 5%. That's down 20% from its highs there. Yeah. And I want to point out one other thing. Remember that the S&P would actually be down um, almost 2% as of today's close anyways, if it weren't for the top seven names. You take just seven names out of the S&P and you have a S&P that's down year to date. So what is the broad market really doing? Is it showing incredible strength here or is it showing, I'm just not really willing to play. I'm lazy, I'm tired, I don't wanna be in the game, coach. Right? That's what it's showing here to you there. So really, really kind of cool. Um, looking elsewhere before we move on. Unfortunately, uh, bond yields moving around here a little bit more. Now, a little bit more interesting today, you get that bear steepening, st still trying out there. Remember, that's where the long end of the, oops, hey, <laughs> that's where the long end of the curve starts getting more pricey and the short end uh, gives back some of it there. So for example, we look at yields today, the two years at 5.12%, okay? The 10 years at 496 should be the other way around. We know it's inverted. We, we get the gist of the inversion, right? But that inversion is tightening up, okay? That's the bear steepening there. Or if I were gonna do it over here, it'd be like this, right? So it's a good sign, uh, generally speaking. We talked about the data on that one yesterday. It's not something you wanna maybe wrap your hopes and dreams around there, but uh, you know, it's what it is there. Uh, moving on. Let's talk about some of the stocks in the news. Lots of earnings to go on here. Visa, this is where I'm going to get grumpy. Uh, beats on earnings. Total, uh, what do you call it? Total payments processed. Higher. Meaning you were swiping more. I thought we had, you, you were going to spend so much money. Uh, they're doing a $25 billion buyback. Yeah, that'll do it. That'll, that'll never uh, push a stock lower, right? We know the data. We know the cheat sheet. I gave you the cheat sheet. You do a buyback. And by the way, Visa raised their dividend to 52 cents from 45, what, 16, 17% there. 
returning cash to shareholders? Do we need to do it? Do we need to consult the chart? Yeah. Oh, look at that. Return cash to shareholders. Oh, that, that'll get you. That'll get you a positive gain there. Hey, okay. We got something there. By the way, if they do a $25 billion, if you own Visa, the stock, and they do a $25 billion buyback, they pay you out now 52 cents a share. It's kind of like rewards points, isn't it? Because, you know, the stock's going higher because of that, or at least historically it does. All right, moving on. Another indication that you guys are still spending money out there. Hilton Worldwide, the, um, the sales for the average available room night, which is how they do it. We've gone through this in previous earnings quarters. Yep, that's higher. More sales for available room nights. Okay, well, maybe there were less room nights booked. Wonder if that, no, total occupancy was about 75%. We were expecting somewhere around 73%, or at least Wall Street was, not me. Hilton even came out and said, their words, not mine, uh, we've hit an inflection point here. We expect positive momentum through next year. In other words, they expect you to keep using your Visa card to book your Marriott or your uh, Hilton and on your vacation. Still spending money out there. Uh, Boeing moving a little bit lower there. Uh, they lost more than expected. They were going to lose money anyways. They lost like three bucks. Yeah, it wasn't good for them. Fascinating thing, and I didn't know this. They have a backlog. You know, I would say home builders have a backlog of so many homes. That's good news. They have a backlog of 5,100 airplanes. Exactly, for some reason. They make about, four, now, as of today, they make about 410 737s a year. Okay. That's a lot of years of backlog there. Like, don't, that's incredible. So nonetheless, this quarter or last quarter just wasn't so great. However, Jesus, it's a lot of airplanes to build. Hope they do a good job. Uh, Alphabet. Uh, cloud revenue was what everybody focused on there. Uh, missing on cloud revenue. It's not so impressive when Microsoft's over here going, yeah, we don't see a problem. <laughs> We're making money. You guys aren't, oh man, right? It looks bad when those two things happen on the same day. And two others, if you don't mind real quick. Uh, I always forget the ticker symbol here, Porsche. You like Porsches? I don't know if it's a stock you want to invest in, but uh, Porsche says our sales were up 1%. These are not cheap cars. And by the way, our sales are not slowing. Our return on the total sales, hey, it was 18.3%. Porsche, which owns a lot of the other, uh, you know, uh, Bugatti and stuff. They have a piece of all of that. Um, so the fanciness continues. We just talked about that yesterday. People spending money. You want another one for the average folk here? Heineken. One of the cooler ticker symbols, huh? Uh, Heineken says, oh my gosh, guys, be our beer volumes down all around the world, eh, except the United States. Volume in the United States, oh, it's doing good. Spending is up, people are paying more. Hey, all right. So at what point do we say, okay, it's costing us more to use our credit cards. I saw we paid like $140 billion in interest on our credit cards and now the government's mad. They shouldn't be mad, it's your fault, it's not theirs. Why, why are they dipping their toe in this? They should do other work. What point do we go, Okay, we're not paying the higher prices. It's not happening. I just gave you new home sales. I gave you the amounts of times you swipe your cards. I gave you the, amount, uh, the money they're making on you spending, uh, going to hotel rooms and stuff. So when I see the comments from people that say, yeah, but Dustin, things are just more expensive. We we, there's things that we need to buy. Okay, let's put that off to the side. Just over here, I get that. I get, we need gas. Okay, you gotta get oil change, right? You have to go to the grocery store. I totally get it. But I see the data. You're going out to eat more than you're going to the grocery store. I don't want to hear any complaints about that. You're going to a Hilton, and that's not the only one, by the way. I don't want to hear any complaints about it. Don't tell me you ain't got no money, right? Man, got a Visa card? You swipe in that card. I can see it. The data doesn't lie. It's all public. The world revolves around data. You bought a Porsche while you were drinking Heineken. You're drinking and driving. Stop it. It's not good for you. <laughs> all right, that's it. I'll take your questions if you have any questions. By the way, Jazz After Dark tonight, right? Yeah. Jazz After Dark tonight, if you're interested in uh, hanging out for that. Got a client that wants to go to cash. Don't like, they don't like the world, the, the world. Hey, ooh, this is scary, I don't know. Uh, a lot of bad things happening. Nuh uh GDP's up, everybody's spending money. This is great, we're, we're living our best lives, right? He wants to go to cash. 
How do you tell if you can go to cash or not? What impact does that have? And how long can you stay in cash? We're going to cover all those geeky details um, tonight, right? Tonight. Doc says, I wish somebody would do my job for me. It was like Fiverr. You ever see that guy? He, he was doing something in accounting and he figured he hired some guy on Fiverr to do it for like one sixteenth of his salary. So he just paid the guy and then he sat there and did nothing. He outsourced his own job and he got away with it for a while. Yeah. Yeah. Same with MasterCard. Yeah. I get the gist of, of Visa. It's not, it's not that they're saying they're making the interest. I was talking about the swipes, number of times that you guys are out there swiping. I don't care what they make on that. They're obviously doing really well. They can buy back 5% of their entire shares outstanding. Uh, swipes. The velocity of money. How fast are you willing to swipe that card? Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, when are those coffee cups and hats coming? Uh, the hats are on their way. We, I don't, we, we don't have coffee cups. We have one coffee cup remaining, and you'd have to come by and steal it from me. It's right over there. Yeah. You guys like the coffee cups? No coffee cups. Yeah, those were hard to ship. That was tough. We thought, yeah, coffee cups. And then we started sending them out to clients and stuff. <laughs> yeah. How about something like, you know what I mean? Like lighter and that doesn't damage. And maybe it doesn't cost us as much to send to you. Happy to do things like that. A towel. We have plenty of towels. We're, we're, we have an overabundance of towels at the moment. Um, hey, uh, your chart showing what companies can do in this environment. Why, why is PayPal taking? They got a huge buyback of 8% uh, float at these levels there. Um, I don't know. Um, that's a great question, though. I haven't done a deep enough dive into them to see what's going on. I've been a fan of Ally, even though I'm not saying I bought it. I'm just saying I've been a fan of what they're doing. And then I'm not telling you to buy the stock. Um, but I've paid more specific attention to them, their day-to-days there. But uh, I will look into PayPal because I think that is a good thing, fascinating thing that I like to do when everybody else goes to sleep. Yeah. Can you do a video on company 401k matches and how they have changed over the years up or down? I could, but I could already tell you it would be slightly skewed. We'd have to do 401k changes over the years, which they're not that old really, so there's not a lot of data. But we'd also have to maybe do a comparison of the average and then X COVID, right? Cause that would skew the data. I can already guess that. Remember during COVID companies said, take away the match. We need to just survive here for a minute. We'll come back and add it later. Uh, so we could, um, you know, we could do something like that. What's your address? You coming over? You gonna steal it? It's on our website. We do keep the door locked though. <laughs> it's not me. The other guy, he, he's, he's a little paranoid, which he should be. There was an active shooter the other day. That's what happens in Florida. Hey, koozies is a good idea. Swipes are good. My point is the concern of credit card debt. With well, the concern of credit card debt is a real thing there. I 100% agree with that. However, as of now, we're absorbing it because otherwise I'd be showing charts of 90-day uh, delinquents. Little bit, there's a concern of that. We saw Discover say that the other day but we'd be seeing an uptick in that. We'd be seeing an uptick, uh, uptick in those that were current going delinquent. So far, we're all happy to just pay these high interest, or those people that have those credit cards, uh, the trillion plus dollars now, uh, they're clear to, they're happy to see that. Do you think uh, October is, uh, show the bottom of the, from the stats? So you think it's gonna be a bottom in the, the market there? Um, short of like a really big and nasty invasion of, uh, Gaza, which I don't know where that's at. I haven't watched today, but um, yeah, I do actually do. And October's really played out in terms of volatility that we've got actually still just doing what it normally does. It's not ex exciting, but with the increase of the folks swiping on luxury items, how does that correlate with a reduction in homeowners cutting back on their home repairs and items? Well, so the luxury side of things that that's sort of a fun way to pick on you guys, but the luxury side, uh, it slows down the, the, the slowest. Did I say that right? It's the last to slow down. People with money won't feel that pinch for the everyday items as much, so they're still willing to spend on the higher items there. So I, that was more of a joke than anything. Porsche, like, come on, I know you guys aren't out there, like, 
buying Porsches every day. But those that have that kind of disposable income and are of that level, they can still do it. And they're not complaining about going out to eat and things. So it's a different segment of the market. I would agree. Can you roll over a Roth 401k to a Roth IRA after 59 and still employed? Yes. Thoughts on starting a position on stock exchanges? Um, well, if you think there's going to be more volatility, especially since we're in the middle of this quarter, if you think there'll be more volatility, that's how you would gauge your decision there. Not necessarily, oh, it's pulled back or it's trending higher or it's broken out. You're looking for volatility because that's how they would end up making a few more dollars. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, right? Uh, we talked about that earlier. Tom, the trend of the earnings season, or the theme, I think you're saying there, forward guidance. Very easy to see today that every single stock that beat, at, look at the metrics just evenly across the board. Every stock that beat and raised or said, hey, we have a positive outlook on the future. We don't give guidance, but we're very positive. Those stocks were higher. Every stock that beat and then lowered guidance or said we're withdrawing guidance or, hey, we're, we're a little bit soft on the future, all of those went down. So it's been proving itself, actually. Didn't have to go hunt it this time. Yeah, I love it. Uh, defense stocks, yeah, I don't know what... So I've got that question for some reason now. People are saying, now I wanna be in defense stocks. Now? Why, what changed? I might be missing something. Maybe there's news I'm unaware of while we're doing this here, but I'm not sure I know, like, why is it now? You think that there will be a lot of spending and continued spending towards that? That's a tricky one there. Yeah, you want to sell some puts on Halliburton at 36 because you like the So oil was higher today. Um, I, so I can't tell you publicly without getting in trouble. I like doing that on stocks that have pulled back. I'm not saying that I will guess exactly where it will stop, but I don't disagree with you on saying, how about a stock that has other, is otherwise strong, in what is more than likely going to be uh, have a strong commodity backing it up. Uh, but I'd like to sell puts as they pull back. I, I would never disagree with that, even if you don't quite get the, the perfect entry there. That's my preference. Yeah. Okay. Looks like you guys are talking to yourself there. All is good. We have covered everything today. Maybe just, you know, spend a few less dollars or something. That's all. <laughs> all right. I will uh, wrap it up there, and we'll be back tomorrow. Do this all over again. Remember, Jazz After Dark here tonight. If you want to look at possibly going to cash, what the impact is, how someone, an advisor, a planner, or whatever, would try to figure that out for you, we're going to do a real-life example. And then uh, we'll see you tomorrow. Adios. Adios.